So this is episode two of Photographing in the Midwest, and today we're going to be going on two different adventures, one to the northwest of St. Louis, to a couple towns called Paris and Mexico, and then the second adventure is going out to the northeast, to central Illinois, to photograph some industrial and barren landscapes in and around Monticello, Illinois. What I had in mind going into these two separate outings was um, being better and improving my photography with harsh light. And I know it's not the most ideal lighting scenario, but if you can be better at it and you can harness that bad light, then you're only going to improve when it comes to golden hour, blue hour, all those different hours that have soft light. So the first outing that I had was actually with Carl, who is my friend from Kirksville, Missouri. We met up in Paris, Missouri, and I wanted to go there because I had never been there before. And usually when we meet up, we meet up in Hannibal, and we've done that a couple of times. And I was a little tired of that same landscape and same scenery. So we decided to meet up in a new place for both of us. As soon as we set out, we saw a guy mowing his grass. He stopped, he said, hey, how you doing? He saw our cameras and then he's like, do you want to take a portrait of me? So Carl did and it was done and over in five minutes. And as you can see, sometimes it's incredibly easy to get a portrait and other times you can knock on a door, try to convince someone, sit there for five minutes, explain your project, and they still don't want to take a portrait. Or you can have a guy like this who's just mowing his grass and he asks us for a portrait. And the bottom line is if you're not out there and you're not doing the thing and you're not walking around, you're never going to have that opportunity to take the portrait. So you have to be out there, you have to be doing it, and then maybe some opportunities will come up. I don't know if if it's gotten any easier because a good photograph is still going to have to have structure. It's still going to have to have all the things combined. If, if you know, obviously, like when I was working on, say, uh, Pompeii or Carrara, a couple of projects of mine, uh, I was using an 8x10 camera and I had film holders that had individual sheets of film in it. I would go for the day in the quarry and I would have only 18 sheets of film with me to, for the entire day. So I oftentimes would set up the camera, spend 20, 30 minutes getting everything composed, and then I'd have to say, is this film worthy? Is this is this worth a sheet of film? Oh, you know? right, and, right. And, and, and so I probably lost some pictures, some good pictures, because I talked myself out of it. Oh, Whereas with, say, digital, with digital photography, obviously you can... You, I could take that picture and move on and not worry about it. So it's possible that more pictures are uh, made because they're not worrying about the film, but I don't necessarily think it's easier to make a good picture. Right. For this first outing, I was shooting digital as well as color film on 4x5. And I love that quote by William Wiley because he talks about how it doesn't matter if it's film or digital, and I'm sure everyone knows this, I've said it a million times, it doesn't matter, film or digital, everyone does everything differently. You still have to have an interesting subject, you still have to have a good light, you still have to have a good composition and structure in the image. It's not about how you take it, it's about what's in front of you and what you can actually capture. And no, I'm not particularly fond of any of these photos, but it's all about experimenting. It's about seeing how different light 
goes on the sensor or goes on a piece of film and how it reacts. Um, if you're not experimenting and you're just going out at golden hour or going out in the morning every single time, you're just never going to know how to shoot in a situation that the lighting isn't ideal. I would say for me, I, well, it's a little bit of both. Um, I like to be surprised. I like to sort of go in uh, wide open and say, oh, look at that over there. Look at that over there. That's interesting. Or how could I do this? But like, I usually go back to places time and again. In my case, I feel like it's very important for me to always stay a little innocent of what's possible and be and still have an element of surprise. One thing that I've really been trying to do, unless I'm on an assignment where time is limited, I'm really trying to stay away from Google Maps and go into a town or a city uh, completely surprised by what I see. I feel like when I look at it on Google Maps beforehand, I'm picking all these different spots and locations and I'm not truly letting myself be open to the possibility of surprise. So when William Wiley said that, he goes into somewhere just completely open and wanting to experience something new. That's what I've been trying to do, uh, specifically with trying to make work for my ongoing project. I'm interested in the thing I photographed, but I'm also, I would say, more interested in the thing I'm making. Mm. And so what I love about photography is it's going to always have that representational aspect. The, the marble quarries of Carrara are going to be in front of me. A tree from the Colorado Plains is going to be in front of right. me. But I'm dealing with the frame. I'm dealing with the four edges and what takes place in the middle of that. And once it's hanging on the wall or in a book, it's about that place but it's also about the experience of the work of art. And that's the, that's the kind of quality of attention span. So that, that's a great sort of concept one of my mentors introduced me to is this notion of the quality of the attention span you bring to something. Mm. I, I think I'm trying to enhance the quality of the attention span a viewer would bring to my photograph, but not necessarily feeling like it's going to make the place more real yeah. or more powerful. Right. Um, I, I mean, I, hopefully I position myself in such a way that the, the great thing about the place is just there to begin with, you know, yeah, right. where I choose to stand. I did take one photo at the end of being in Paris, Missouri, and I had seen this car parked up on a trailer with the Paris, Missouri water tower in the background, and I knew the light wasn't the best, but... Was I ever going to be back in Paris, Missouri? Maybe, possibly in the future. Was I ever going to be back in Paris, Missouri where there was a car on a trailer with the Paris, Missouri water tower in the back? Probably not. So I just told myself I may as well take it. If it's trash, it's trash. If it's good, it's good. So I set up my 4x5. I was trying to get a decent composition. I was having a little trouble with getting everything that I wanted in focus. I obviously wanted the car in focus, but I also wanted to be able to read Paris on the Paris water tower in the background. And with 4x5, the depth of field is very shallow. If I were to shoot this wide open, it would be a complete big blur in the background and you wouldn't be able to see anything. So I ended up using just a little bit of tilt in order to change the plane of focus so I could get the front of the car as well as the water tower in focus. And then I stopped down all the way to F32 so you'd be able to read it decently. Funny, right? The week after that, I met up with Vince. And again, if you guys watch this video, super appreciative of that. I love the way that it turned out. Um, I met up with him in Monticello, Illinois, which is about halfway between St. Louis and Chicago, where he lives. And Vince is just a super great guy. We met at Chico. We immediately hit it off. It seemed like we had been friends for years. And I just love when that happens with random people, but especially when it happens with 
a cool ass photographer who shoots really good work. Oh man, someone got ice. And out. we <laughs> talked about a lot of things, but we just wanted to drive around and explore some different cities around Monticello. And the first place that we actually went to was a, I don't even know if it's a town, but it does say Hayes, Illinois on Google Maps. And we found this old abandoned car that was sitting on the road right by a telephone pole. And it looks like it was either left there or it was wrecked there. And usually when I'm by myself, I would not have driven down this road that had a big giant private property sign, especially in a place that I don't know uh, and I've never been before. But when you have someone with you, you have a witness. So if I go up and knock on a door by myself and I get pulled in and kidnapped and then tortured, nobody's there to see it. But if Vince is there and I go up and knock on a door, he can call the cops. He can save me. So it's nice to have someone like that when you're driving around, especially on roads that say private property. But I knocked on the door. This woman uh, answered. Super nice. An older woman. And I said, hey, is that your car? And she's like, that's not our property. And that's not my car. But this one is. It's my son-in-law's. So she's like, you can do whatever you want. So we went down there. I did my best to scout this scene, figure out what the best composition was, and then take my photo. Everyone knows that film is expensive right now. And Portrait 160, I believe, is having a little uh, raise in the price. I don't know how much it's going to be, but currently it's $65 for 10 sheets. I've been sending my film out to a lab for $5 a sheet, so it's over $10 per photo that I take. And when you're in harsh light like this and you're in a place where you're probably never going to be back, you just have to bite the bullet and say, I need to take this. And if it's trash, like I said, it's trash. And I always go back to thinking about Joel Sternfeld and about how he was shooting for American Prospects and he would shoot one photo a day because even back then, film was super expensive. And... When you look through the work of American Prospects, a lot of the work is either at golden hour or in the afternoon when the sun is setting or there are a ton of clouds in the sky. I could only find five or six photos where he actually decided to take a photo in harsh midday blue skies and the majority of them are because he probably came across something that wasn't going to happen again. Or he came across something that he deemed interesting enough to take that photo in the quote-unquote bad light. And one of those times, it turned out that he took the photo that he would be best known for, which is the elephant that escaped from the zoo, and it was exhausted sitting on the road somewhere in Washington. So I always have that in the back of my mind when I come across something, and I'm not saying that this car that I came across sitting up against a telephone pole is like a exhausted renegade elephant in Washington. But there will be things like that that happen, and you can't let the price of film or the harsh bad light affect your decision in taking the photo or not. I did end up taking a photo of the second car, and again, I'll have to see how it plays in the whole collection of images that I have, but right now I'm not too fond of it. After we went to Hayes, we went down to Tuscola, Illinois, and then we eventually made our way up to Monticello, Illinois. And the one thing that I wanted to photograph there was these massive corn grain bins, which you guys know I'm a big fan of bins. Um, But I did take some photos around the grain bins, and these were all on 4x5 film with HP5. And I've said in the past that I can get digital to look like film when it comes to black and white, and I still do think that's the case. But there is just something about 
four by five film whenever I shoot it, whether it's color and black and white, it's just different. And I don't know how to explain it, but even these photos of grain bins just look different. It's the tones, it's the detail, it's just the way that 4x5 renders a scene, and I love it. And it really makes me excited for the future and just shooting um, a whole project on black and white. And I'm not sure what that's going to be, but currently I do love shooting grain bins, so maybe it'll be something based around that. And uh, we'll just see how it goes. But uh, we ended with a little uh, 4x5 color shot and just trying to switch things up and shoot some more landscape images. Maybe nothing to do with cars, nothing to do with vehicles or people, and just shooting some landscapes that remind me of the Midwest and really try to bring home that point of this entire project being centered around the Midwest. But that is my two trips. If you guys have any questions about anything, let me know. Be sure to check out Carl's work. Be sure to check out Vince's work. And be sure to smash that like button. I've never said that before, but I'm saying it now because I watched a video with Alex Soth and he said it. And if he can say it, then I can say it. Bye.